Alright guys, um, so this is another, I guess you could call it fanfiction idea, but more like fanfiction ideas, and this is like a series of kind of fanfiction ideas I kind of had rolling around in my head. I don't know if I'll honestly do any of these, but these are just kind of, um, ideas that kind of happened when, um, <laughs> this is what happens when you binge watch a lot of Ed, Ed, Nettie. <laughs> uh, at least for me, anyway. This is what happens when you binge watch a lot of Ed, Ed, Nettie, and, um, <laughs> shit, at least for me, uh, you know, shit like this kind of comes to your mind. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna talk about, um, several ideas, uh, that kind of had rolling around in my head. Um, I don't know if I'll do any of them, honestly. Of, um, that are kind of Ed and Eddie centric <laughs> because like I said I binge watched and this is what happens when you bit at least for me it's when I uh, binge watch and this happens anyway um, so let's talk about a few shall we so the big one honestly is kind of like a civil war type idea but I'll explain in a minute if anything it's actually not so much civil war but more like something like a DC story which I'll get into in a moment so this story is pretty much an idea I had that, um, not so much spawned off of Civil War, but that was the best way to explain it. It's actually more spawned off the idea, it's more like an Ed Ed Nettie version of the current Batman storyline, The War of Jokes and Riddles. Um, and, and you're probably thinking, well, that's a pretty violent story, DPZ, how's that work? Well, the thing is, like I said, it's an Ed Ed Nettie version of it. So no one really gets killed, everyone's just kind of fighting with their fists, or they're, you know, <laughs> they're fighting with Canadian squirt guns, turkey basters, or, you know, whatever they have at their hands. It's kind of a kid-friendly version of the War of Jokes and Riddles. Um, so yeah, the idea is pretty much that um, Double D and Eddie have, after a scam has gone horribly awry, several houses have been destroyed, um, and, yeah, a Double D's kind of like, no, this is the last straw, I'm done with you, Eddie, this was all your idea, I am so done with you dragging me into these kind of situations. So you know what? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out of here. Um, so that's kind of the thing, is that, um, uh, Eddie and Double D go separate ways, and, and poor Ed is left in the uh, middle of it. Uh, but anyway, we find out that Eddie is, uh, Eddie and Double D are making their own scams, and, um, they're kind of really conflicting with one another, so Eddie is kind of like, no, if you don't want to be my friend, I'm more than happy of being his enemy. So what happens is that Eddie and Double D end up getting into a war, a war of scams of sort, and poor Ed is left in the middle of it, while all the other kids of the cul-de-sac are kind of really choosing sides. They're really kind of picking sides. Some of them think it's fun, others think that, yeah, this is kind of a big deal. So, yeah, on one side, for Eddie, um, Lee has joined him, as well as the Urban Rangers. Of course, Rolf, Jimmy, and Johnny have all joined um, Eddie. <laughs> and he thinks, yeah, I've got quite the, you know, impressive group, excluding Jimmy. Meanwhile, Double D has it has gotten in his in his corner. He's got Marie, he's got Kevin, Naz, and Sarah um, on his side. Mostly because Naz and you know he's and Eddie makes this joke of of course half the women and Kevin go uh, go to Double D's side. <laughs> um, anyway, of course, uh, like more than half the women on that side. Even Kevin went over there. Ugh, it's infuriating. Anyway. So that's kind of the it, it, that's kind of it. Very much like in War of Jokes and Riddles, um, where the Batman villains all kind of pick sides to who was going to serve, work for Joker and who was going to work for Riddler. In here, it's like who's going to work for Eddie and who's going to go on Double D's side. And you're probably thinking, well, what about Ma May? She didn't really pick a side. Just like Ed, she can't stand the thought of her sisters fighting each other, and she's like, I, I'm with you, Ed. I can't stand this kind of violence. So really, Ed and, and May are kind of like the Batman and Catwoman of this story, where they're trying, where um, basically they're trying to have a little peace in here. And you're, and I know in the in the comic of War and Jokes and Riddles, it's Batman telling the story to Catwoman of how this all went down and what happened on his end. So, but yeah, and here I thought, you know, it'd be Ed and May trying to bring peace and you know get their friends and their sister, you know, in May's case, sisters back together. So that was kind of the whole story right there. 
Not so, like I said, not so much Civil War, but more like War of Jokes and Riddles. Um, anyway, so there's that story. For uh, for another story I kind of had in mind is an ultimate take on, um, if you guys remember the, I can't remember the name of the episode, but if you guys remember the episode where Jimmy, where Eddie tries to turn Jimmy into a sumo wrestler and they fail miserably in trying to do like cartoon logic to slingshot all the way to Japan so he can roll in money. Um, yeah, this is kind of a what if scenario of what if through the, the power of cartoon logic, Ed, Eddie, Jimmy, and Ed managed to make it to, um, managed to make it to Japan via cartoon logic. And of course, Double D completely stunned at first, but then he's like, oh my god, my friends and Jimmy are, are in another country. What the hell am I gonna do? How the hell am I gonna get them back? So the whole thing is like, me, where Double D is trying to find a way to get to Japan to get Ed, Eddie, and, and Jimmy out of there. Meanwhile, Eddie, Ed, and Jimmy are pretty much living the high life of in Japan. I'm, just imagine all the funny gags you could have with Eddie and Ed without Double D's guidance or anything like that um, in Japan. Just imagine all the shenanigans you could get into with Ed alone in Japan. I even had this idea in my head where there's a scene where Ed breaks into um, Toho Studios, steals a Godzilla suit, and just starts smashing a unused um, suit until the you know until security arrives and Ed you know of course due to his over -imagin active imagination just starts fighting with the security guards making like going screonk <laughs> uh. so yeah God, yeah just imagine Ed running around in a Godzilla suit that one alone sells it um. <laughs> anyway so, yeah, that was kind of the thing, is that meanwhile, Jim, you know, Eddie is getting Jimmy to be a, um, he's made him a Yokozuna, and, yeah, it's just pretty much, like I said, the, Ed, you know, Ed and Eddie in Japan with Jimmy, while Double D tries to find a way to get them back. Um, but anyway, so that was another, um, story right there, and all because of cartoon logic. It was like a one big what-if scenario, and let's face it, the Eds in Japan, let's, let's face it, we all kind of wanted that, we all kind of want this. Speaking of, of, uh, of road trips, um, here's another one, where basically, um, it was, the whole story, the idea for this story was called Viva La Ed, um, and Viva La Ed is pretty much, um, if you, if you can probably guess by now, Viva La Ed is pretty much the Eds going to Vegas. Um, the story for that idea was that Eddie is... Eddie's just sick of not getting, you know, being able to get a scam right. He can't, you know, he can't make any big, you know, he can't make any money. He's, you know, he has gotten more bruises than than jawbreakers. So he's like, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> I know a place that we can go that we can roll in money because he's convinced that you can make money, just tons of money in Vegas. So he, along with Double D and Ed, are, you know, Double D's forced to go along with him, and Ed, of course, just goes along for the hell of it. Um, they all get aboard a bus, and they, <laughs> well, not a bus, they'd be more like, they hitch a ride with Marie, because they want to get out of there, um, but they don't have money for a bus. Why'd I even say bus at the beginning? <laughs> Sorry, brain fart. But what happens is that, Mar that um, Marie has a, has a truck, and she can drive. So the Eds are forced to go with Marie, uh, are forced to get a ride with Marie if she can, if they agree to have her tag along. It's not like they have a choice. So the Eds and Marie go to Las Vegas. Could you just imagine all the hijinks in there? Just imagine all the shenanigans, all of them, all the shenanigans that the Eds plus Marie Kanker could probably get into. And of course be the double D Marie shipper, shipper that I am since day one. Um, yeah, this it would be a it wouldn't be the forefront, but it would definitely be part of the story. Um, that would definitely that of Double D and Marie in Vegas, kind of forming a romance. But again, just imagine the Eds alone in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> I just I'm just kind of imagining the Viva Las Vegas song by Elvis Presley playing in the G in the uh, the truck, and Eddie's just like punches the, the radio, and he's just like, oh, seriously? 
But yeah, just imagine them going to like a magic one of like Chris Angel's magic shows or Cirque du um, Cirque Soleil. Just imagine them in every kind of situation, and especially add at like the buffet table. Just kind of picture that in you know, get get that kind of mental image in your head of Ed at the buffet table. <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> that alone kind of sells it, doesn't it? <laughs> um. But yeah, like I said, just about like he see, he see like this thing of gravy. It's like it's coming home with me, guys. <laughs> um. I don't know, like, that was the one thing I've always, I always wanted with Ed, and I kind of got that with the movie, um, but I always wanted to see, like, it's much like with The Simpsons, where the Eds are in another place, and could you imagine what they're like outside of the cul-de-sac, if you put them in, like, another country, or another, you know, in a big city, what would it be like if they were in, you know, Japan, or New York, or something of that nature, and what would they be like, and what would, how would they kind of react to all of this? That's what I always kind of want. I know it was. I know the Ed, the Ed and Eddie show because, yeah. Excuse me. They were some broke. They were some broke ass kids. So they couldn't really leave anywhere. And even in the, in the uh, movie, they kind of just traveled to a circus. So there wasn't really a lot of hijinks to go through. But really, if they could, if they could have, could you just imagine all the uh, the hijinks they could have gotten into, in other countries or in other states? Just other cities in general. <laughs> yeah. So that's where a lot of these story ideas kind of came from, really, was just kind of like, hey, what would it be like if they went there? Or they went there. But the problem is, how do they get there? Because <laughs> like I said, they some broke-ass kids. Um, uh, there was another story idea I kind of had. Oh, the last one is kind of a crossover, really. The last idea I kind of had as a crossover is an Ed and Nettie... Um, Loud House crossover, and this one was kind of recent and really just kind of out there and just for the fun of it. And even though, even though I'm not a big fan of, oh, what if they're secretly re related? With this, it kind of makes sense. And, I'm, and you're probably thinking, oh, well, one of the Eds is related to the Louds. Nope, the Kanker sisters are the cousins of the Louds <laughs> because that kind of makes sense in a way, doesn't it? In a weird way, so you can see the Kankers um, being like relatives of the Loud House. That kind of just kind of can chaotic nature of it all. So yeah, and that's not really much of a plot. It just be it would just be kind of fun of just watching the Kanker sisters interact with Lincoln and his you know his ten sisters, especially Lo especially um, Lana and uh, Lynn. Though I think Lana and Lynn, out of every one of the other Eds, would worship the Kankers um, as like you know as the they would just worship the three of them. <laughs> as like these just ultra role models, even though they're just pretty terrible people. <laughs> that would be the story in a nutshell. I don't, I, that's the thing, is like I didn't really think of a plot, just more like, just kind of like random ideas of them interacting, of them just kind of, what would it be like if the Kanker sisters just hung out for a week at the, Louds ha at the Loud House? What would that kind of be like? <laughs> I know, total insanity. And especially, like I said, Lynn and Lola, uh, Lynn and Lana, excuse me, um, Lynn and Lana would have the most fun of them there, because like I said, they would probably worship Et and Marie, Lee, and May. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they would tease and taunt um, Lincoln to no fucking end. <laughs> oh, Lord, that would just be something to behold in and of itself, right? <laughs> but anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below, what do you guys think of these uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie ideas? Just comment below, let me know. Do you guys like them? Do you guys hate them? And what are some idea, story ideas you always had with Ed, Ed, and Eddie? But once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.